to talk to people. Actually, I got a cool van coming. Yeah, that'll be neat. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. But yeah, I could go around just talking to people around Lake Norman. There's a lot of good stories. There's a ton of stories around the lake. 520 miles of shoreline. If you could ride around either by boat on the water or by boat in a car, because this is a boat. This is a boat for a car. Do you know, trivia question, total shoreline of Lake Norman is more than the combined total of North Carolina and South Carolina coastline. The combined total of both states. I did not know that. With the way it sp splinters out, like all the Finger Lakes, like, you know, inlets in Lake Norman, yeah, that equals more shoreline than North Carolina and South Carolina combined. I do know the author of Normie that wrote the book about Norma. Norman, the, the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, the monster that's in Lake Norman. So what was her inspiration for writing that book? I guess she was on the water in a boat and seen the Loch Ness Monster, so she wrote a children's story. For real? She saw the monster? Well, everybody has seen it on the lake. I haven't seen it. There's tons of spottings of it. I need a boat. I'm not out on the lake enough, obviously. Have you seen the monster? I've never seen the monster, but I hear there are sightings daily of it. Every day this thing is out on the lake? Doesn't well, not it ever sleep day. or I think, eat? I think only on cloudy days more. What about on sunny days? What's it do? It's a big underwater, like eight foot long catfish looking thing. A catfish? So you've seen this catfish? Well, no, I haven't really seen it. I read about it in a book. Okay. You know, I think we had a copy of the book. Yeah, right here. How do you have a copy Look of that? that book? Doesn't everybody have a copy of this book? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. You can find us on all platforms now and wherever you listen. We're on YouTube and Spotify. Welcome to the Rev Fast Podcast. We got a good guest on today. We've got the voice of Lake Norman. We got the voice of WSIC. We've got a former uh, NASCAR crew member. We've got Patrick Reynolds. Neil, thanks so much for having me here. This is great. Love. I've wanted to be on the Rev Fast Podcast for a while. Waiting in the wings is a great opportunity. Thanks for having me. I appreciate me on. you coming on. I mean, you've been uh, the MC for a couple of our events and mm -hmm. uh, got every one of our upcoming events scheduled. So that's a lot of fun. It's always good to have you out. Um, but my gosh, you are everywhere. Every time I turn on the internet, you are at some event, some show, some 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 function going on somewhere. So what all do you got going on? Oh gosh, I'm glad you're, you're sitting down. This will take a while. <laughs> you're making waves around Lake Norman. I'm making waves around Lake Norman and Charlotte. Yeah, we've got a lot going on. I've got a lot going on. The fact that you note that, that I'm all, you can't escape me. I'm on your uh, Facebook feeds and social media, internet. That's good. That's a good thing. Uh, gosh, what do I have going on? Waves Entertainment is a big part of my life, and I MC host the events that need an MC and a host, which is quite a bit. We offer the stage and the sound for the Tobble Walks and Cornelius, the Second Friday Street Festivals. Those are pretty well known to the community. We do some work in Ballantyne as well, around Charlotte and Lake Norman for your own events, the Hot Rods and Hops, a monthly car show that we have right outside the doors here at RevFast. I host those. Ghostface Brewing in downtown Mooresville has a monthly series as well. We got a lot of things going on with uh, around the area, concerts like that. Um, I also host the Home Ad Show on WSIC Radio. That's weekdays, 9 to 11 a.m. every morning. That is a call-in show as we were talking off camera. That, call, that show averages 1,800 phone calls a month. And tell me, this is just people calling in wanting to sell stuff? It's like a swap shop. Yeah, it's like a tag sale on air. And they just all live in the Lake Norman area or Lake yeah. Norman, Statesville? Iredell County, Statesville, right. Lake Norman. Um, you know, The radio station reaches down all the way down to North Charlotte. So if you travel down I-77 from Lake Norman, you'll hear it right up until like about 485, I-85 down there. So we capture uh, North Charlotte and every town all the way up 77 through Iredell County to the west side of Lake Norman. So anyone in that area, actually, it's also broadcast on WDSL in Moxville. So we've got a station that carries it as well. And it's like a tag sale swap shot on the air. One of the taglines I ask people, are you buying, are you selling, or are you celebrating? So can I just call in if I'm looking for stuff? Like yeah. we're looking for items for the Jeep event for like obstacle yes. course? I could just see what else, what, who's got products out there that maybe laying around in their yard they want to get rid of. Absolutely you can. We take a lot of calls like that. 
people not looking to sell anything. They're looking to buy something, but they put the word out, I am searching for X, Y, and Z. And here's my phone number. If you have it, give me a call. And so it's like a morning live people. marketplace. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's two hours, Monday through Friday. It was hosted for quite a while by Pat Shannon, very well-known radio personality throughout the area. He was on the air for decades. He just retired at the end of 2023. There were certain dominoes that fell within the station of moving people around and different shows coming and going. And recently I landed as the host of Home Ad. And it is, gosh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of phone calls every single day. If you try to call in and people are having trouble, I'm hearing getting through because the show is so popular. So sometimes we're dead on phone calls and sometimes it's crazy. You got all the phone lines lit up. So we have a lot of fun on air and talk to people about what they what they have, what they're going on, what's going on in their lives. Because people call in with birthdays and anniversaries as well. And we have a contest every day to celebrate people's birthdays and anniversaries, give away prize packs and fun stuff. Uh, it is great. I, I, I haven't been a part of a vehicle this big that connects to the community in this type of manner. Yeah. The, the things with Waves Entertainment is on stage and the audience is right in front of you. With the radio station, I talk into a microphone and really all I see is the audio producer, Joe Berg, who does a great job with the show, also hosts um, the Scoreboard, which is a sports talk show. Really knowledgeable about racing as well. He wouldn't be a bad guest for a red yeah. fast and as well. That, that's WSIC. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it 105.9? Is that what it is? Around uh, North Charlotte and Lake Norman, 105.9, up north to Iredell County, 100.7 FM, and 1400 AM. The AM station is where it started, I think, about 76 years ago, 75 years ago is mm-hmm. where it started. And then you can catch the radio station online as well, on their webpage, on the social media platforms, Facebook, X, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and they got a new app too that really? they just launched. Yeah, you can so you can take it on your phone anywhere you want to go with a video stream. Even it's a radio show that has a video component too. Well, I've enjoyed well. listening to it because I mean, during throughout the day, I mean, they have stuff about church and religion mm-hmm. and, and politics, and then it's sports updated weather. I mean, it's it's a nice show throughout the whole day. Thanks, I appreciate you saying that. That's what it is: is news talk radio. You know, local news. Local talk, it keeps you informed with the community. They have some shows that are syndicated that also cover news and politics nationally and globally even. Uh, but uh, most of the programming is local, right around here in the, uh, no, call the, call the footprint of the antenna reach. That's where the stories are. That's what the reporters are. Those are where, where the hosts are. There's a show hosted by the Lake Norman uh, Chamber uh, uh, president, and President of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Bill Russell, hosts a show. Uh, the mayor of Cornelius hosts a show. There's representatives from Mooresville that host shows. So there's town people involved. There's there's politicians that host shows. Jason Sane, uh, Jeff McNeely, Vicki Sawyer. They're up in Raleigh representing these areas that the radio station covers. And then they come back to this area around uh, Lake Norman, and they host radio shows to connect to the community. That's what WSIC is really all about. It's local. It connects with you, the hosts, the shows. They affect you directly and your neighbors, and we want to keep you informed. My show, informed, entertained as well, as we talked about. There's a lot of laughs and fun Oh, it's stuff fun. To it was fun to listen to. I was listening to it this morning, and it was just from a dog kennel to yeah. power tools to cars. Guy called in. He was wanting like a, I think, a mid-60s Buick or... Yeah. 63 Buick yeah. Skylark or something like that. Yeah. I could probably know where one of those are. I should have wrote down his number. but I, I've got it in it. the notes, yeah. yeah. You can call, you, people will do that. What, what you're describing is people will call in a day or two later and say, just have this conversation with me. Hey, two days ago, there was a caller that was looking for a 60s Buick. What says number? Now, off the top of my head, I obviously don't right. remember it, but we keep a folder for the last few days. We can go back. What I tell most people is wait till the next commercial break. Let me dive in there. I'll find his number in the next segment. We announce it on air, so they get like a double double bill, billing on that because people will hear that and say, "Oh gosh, I need that thingamajig." Yeah, and they'll call up. So I had it tuned in on my radio, and mm-hmm. Sunday I get in the car and the race is on. So y'all cover the race as well on Sundays. As yes, the, yes. The NASCAR racing. They WSIC is a big sports property around the area. They cover the NASCAR Cup Series, so MRN and PRN. They broadcast the trucks and Xfinity as well. WSIC does not cover those, but they have the Cup Series. However, what we're juggling 
as we also carry the Carolina Panthers. Also carry Charlotte FC, which is the soccer team. So we got. So what do you do when they cross over? I mean, with Panthers and when you get into the fall, uh, the Panthers are a complete package. Every game, pregame, postgame, you have to. So I can't be a race fan and listen to it. Depends on the the time. Depends on the time and where the Panthers are, because uh, MRN and PRN, I believe, you can do by event. Um, When you get into the fall, there's a lot of times the Panthers will have a one o'clock kickoff. But the Cup Series race may not go green until 4 or 5 o'clock that day, in which case they carry both, or vice versa. Panthers can have a Thursday night game. They could have a Monday night game. They could have a Sunday night game. And the Cup Series moves around a little bit as well. So there's very few conflicts on that. Something cool this year that I got I want to promote is that WSIC will carry from Charlotte on Memorial Day weekend the Coca-Cola 600 and... They're going to carry coverage of the Indianapolis 500 that same really? day. So the whole day. The whole day. But to carry the Indy 500, we had to do five Indy car races in addition. We couldn't just carry the 500. Not that that's a bad thing. So we're going to carry five Indy car races throughout uh, uh, the series or, or throughout this year. And Kyle Larson is the is the guy this year that's going to race both oh. events, the, the Memorial Day 1100, so to speak. Yeah. 500 miles in Indy. He's going to be good in both of them. Get on a plane, come to Charlotte, and run 600 miles. So WSIC will have every mile of that day So a funny story. I grew up in Concord maybe 10 minutes from Charlotte Mercer Speedway. Mm -hmm. And if the Speedway didn't sell out, and this would have been in the 80s and 90s, if Mm. it didn't sell out, it would be a blackout, and you couldn't watch it on TV. Uh And it was their way of encouraging people to live local to buy tickets and go to the race. Yep. So I remember having to go sit in my car, with my dad, not my car, but my dad's car, <laughs> and listen to the race uh-huh. um, with him because it was not on TV. Mm-hmm. So now we could we wouldn't have to worry about that. I guess. I mean, if it was, they don't do that anymore. Maybe, but that's a different. I that's a different animal. Broadcast has broadcasting sports has evolved over the years. That was not unique to Charlotte Motor Speedway or NASCAR. Stick and ball sports had that policy really? for years. Yeah, I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up in Connecticut, so we were connected locally with broadcasting to New York City. Giants, Jets, Mets, Yankees, Knicks, things like that. If the event was not sold out, we would not get TV coverage of it. However, you take the New York Giants, those were season ticket holders, and the history of that franchise goes back for decades. So every game was already a sellout. You could be next door to Giants Stadium and watch the football game. However, the NFL had that policy throughout the league. Where if the if it didn't sell out or get to a certain percentage, 90, 95%, that was to encourage people to go there, buy a ticket, and not sit home to watch TV. A lot of sports did that. That wasn't unique to Charlotte or NASCAR. With the TV package they have now with Fox, NBC, now USA, FS1, it's run differently where the networks pay, gosh, it's in the billions of dollars to the NFL or NASCAR for the TV rights. So uh, I don't think the blackout's an issue anymore. The Indianapolis 500 is. That is still operating. That's an NBC property. They broadcast that, and there still is a blackout issue around Indianapolis. However, what they do is that race is run in the afternoon, and then that broadcast is aired in the Indianapolis area Sunday night. So you just don't see it live. It's, you know, whatever it is at noon or whatever the time the green flag is at Indy. They'll pick it up at a broadcast that evening, probably like six, right. seven o'clock Sunday night, so you can watch. It's always neat. Who was the last person to do that? Tony Stewart? I don't know if Tony Stewart was the last person to do that. I'm trying to think who. It's 2024, and I remember I was in uh, I was in Indianapolis. I believe it was 2014 when Kurt Busch did it, and I don't know if anyone has done it since then. Or Kurt ran sixth in the 500. I remember that day Ryan Hunter Ray won the race because he drove for Andretti Autosports, and Kurt Busch also drove for Andretti. Kurt hopped on a plane, got out of there quick, came to Charlotte, uh, missed the driver's meeting like they all do, had to start shotgun in the 600, had an engine failure, and he didn't finish the race. But I was in that day in 2014. I think that is the last guy to do it. Um, John Andretti did it. Tony Stewart did it several Tony Stewart, I believe, is the only driver to have completed all 1,100 miles oh, wow. on that day. Yeah, the top 10 finishes in both. In, well, I look in both forward races. to watching Kyle Larson do it because he is. That's oh, a he's heck a of talent. A world, man. Yeah, he's got Hendrick Motorsports with uh, him in Charlotte, and then he'll have. Uh, I think it's in association with uh, McLaren. 
in um, Indianapolis wow. for the 500. So is that where you're from up north? Where are you from? Connecticut. 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 Yeah, I grew up in Connecticut. Uh, got into racing up there, believe it or not. What kind of racing did you get into first up there? I went to the Danbury Race Arena, which is a fairgrounds that no longer exists now. Uh, it was a short, paved short track Saturday night racing, a third of a mile. And it was a modified stock cars. It was one division, short track, open wheel style now. N- NASCAR has, has had a modified tour since 1948. I think 1949 when NASCAR was formed. Did you know that that's the oldest division NASCAR has? No, I didn't know. 1949, first champion of NASCAR, Red Byron, is actually the modified series champion. Really? 1950 is when the Grand National Series was formed, which is now today's Cup Series. The modified series is a year older than the Cup Series with NASCAR. But I grew up watching modifieds, and that was in the day when you did not have a custom-built car. It was all street vehicles, that were turned into race cars. I saw a lot of Gremlins, Vegas, Pintos, Chevettes that were that were none f- of those cars sound like race cars. No, none of them do. None of them do. Guys put cages in them, souped up motors, put in a manual transmission in a you know good rear end, and they went racing. And a lot of those parts were stock. And those were the type of cars. It was I watched a one division show on a Saturday night, we ran heats consolation races in a feature and it was when i was uh gosh how old was i seven years old when i saw my first race and it was it was kind of magic how i got drawn to the sport my father went to high school with kenny webb his name was kenny webb he was a buddy of his and my father who was you know i was a little kid at the time um became a partner and sponsor of of kenny's stock car for saturday night Season began. We get into springtime a little bit. I'm seven years old. I don't really understand what a race car is. My father takes me to the race shop that afternoon, and I go into to this race shop, much like RevFast now, and I see a race car up close for the very first time. You were hooked. What, what, what is this thing? What, are you kidding me? And I meet Kenny Webb, and like, oh, my God, looking up, shaking his hand. Like, what, what kind of hero have I just met here? What kind of daring swashbuckling, crazy man have I met. We go to the racetrack that night and I sit in the grandstand, big covered fairground style grandstands where it catches the sound because it's got a roof on it. So the sound uh, captures in there. We go out and I watch him. So I got somebody to roof so this for. this is a closed in stadium? with No, just the, the roof is covered. Oh, it's outside. Okay. Yeah, it's a third of a mile oval, but just paved. The, the stands are covered. The stands are covered, yeah. And Kenny goes out. And he wins the feature race that night. I met this man that afternoon. I saw a race car for the first hero. time. And I had a new hero, and I was hooked on this sport. And I remember saying it at the time, like, I want to do this the rest of my life. And I just got into racing. And that was I loved it. For That's the all you've day. ever done. That's all I've ever done. Until you, until you became this. Until I got under radio. I never went to a prom in high school because it was on race night. On, I was, on it weekends. was on race night. As soon as I was old enough, I got into the pit area at, uh, at, uh, at uh, well, it wasn't Danbury. It was Stafford Motor Speedway, about 16 years old. Danbury closed when I was like 12. The property was sold. It became a mall. I'll tell you how, you know, cheating on my, on my age here a little bit, but the biggest winner and hero in, at Danbury Race Arena in Connecticut was Don LaJoy. His grandson is Corey LaJoy. Okay. That's his grandfather. Don's son is Randy, Randy, and Randy's son's Corey. I was like, I, I remember Randy running his first race when he was a teenager. Don was the big, big, big winner, all-time feature winner at the Danbury Race Arena, and now Corey is racing the NASCAR Cup yeah. Series. So Corey's that's, doing good. Corey's doing. Corey yeah. is getting all out of his equipment that he can. Yeah. Uh, Spire Motorsports doing a great job at NASCAR, but we know they're not Hendrick, they're not Penske. But they're getting every single dollar that they can yeah. out, of, out, of, out of that car. He's and doing Co- real good with that Corey's podcast. He's got, oh, yeah. too, what is it, Stacking Pennies? Stacking Pennies. It's I a love good his. podcast. Yeah. I like it watching it. It's good. I do. I like, I like watching Corey's, uh, yeah. too. Uh, hopefully, he can catch this one. I hope yeah. he does. Yeah, we need to have him on here. Maybe yes, he could you do. teach me a little couple things. I don't know. I Well, we could text him, find yeah, out. We'll sure. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so what brought you down to Charlotte area and NASCAR and all that? Where did, where, when was that? It was a dream to go full time as a, in professional auto racing. I worked on, I let off a little bit when I got into the pit areas. You had to be 16 in Connecticut to get into a pit area. Danbury closed when I was, I think, 12. 
So when I was 16, I started going to the pits at the modified races at uh, Stafford Motor Speedway and uh, Thompson, Connecticut, uh, Waterford Speedball, all Connecticut tracks that had modified racing. And I started going to work. But up there, you do it as a hobby. You don't do it as a profession. I want to do it as a profession. I got older in life, thought I learned enough. Life just kind of unfolded for me. Whereas I picked up everything I had, put in a moving truck. Move, I moved right here to Mooresville. No job, nothing. I just had paper resumes. Remember, these are the days when you still handed out resumes. And I went knocking on race team doors. I just wanted to come to Charlotte. And I picked Mooresville because the tagline of it was Race City USA. That seemed like a great place to go if you want to look for a job in NASCAR. I tell people the equivalent of that is if you want to be an actor, you move to Los Angeles. If you want to be a country singer, you move to Nashville. If you want to be involved in NASCAR, you, you come, to, come to Mooresville yeah. or Lake Norman and Charlotte, this area, and, and find your home. And uh, I came here, got an apartment, and started handing out resumes. It took me a couple of years, actually. But I got a job uh, at Goodridge, plumbing cars, plumbing race cars with, with hoses and fittings and things like that. And I got the call from handing out all the, uh, the um, resumes that I had. I got to know people because I got to the races a little bit in the garage area. I was doing it the same way I was doing short track racing up north is you work a regular job and then at five o'clock you clock out of your day job and you go work on race cars at night and weekends. I was actually doing that for low budget cup teams, ASA teams, truck teams around here. I was doing some work for free just to get in the garage area and travel to the racetrack. Yeah, that's back when all know. the teams were built in cars, so you could go to any of those oh, teams yeah. and yeah, build uh, something. It was back something. in the Bush series, there was 40 cars on the grid, but there was 40 places to go to work. Right. It was different. The truck series, same thing, 30, car, 30 trucks on the grid. There was 30 opportunities to get a job, where unlike now there's a lot consolidated a little bit. And eventually I got the call. Uh, somebody wanted to hire me full-time, not a whole lot of money, but I was doing what I wanted to do, and it was Kevin LePage. Oh, wow. He called me with his Bush team. Uh, he was located on a Huntersville, and he, he said, yeah, I got your resume. I'd like to talk to you. I, I went down there, talked to him, and it wasn't a whole lot of money, but gosh darn it, I was working for, I was full-time on a race team. I brought my toolbox, and I went to work. I also got a taste of how volatile the, uh, the racing world is, Kevin was driving for Morgan McClure in the Cup Series at the time, the four car. And they had just, the, the Kodak sponsorship had just moved on to them to Penske. Uh, Brendan Gaughan was driving for Penske. So this would have been after the Ernie Irvin years? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, this is 2004. So that I was say. on the end of all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Kodak had, had been on Morgan McClure through, through 2003. Mm -hmm. Then they moved on to Penske. But they were with Morgan McClure for a long time. Right. And Kevin was still in the four car. They were running with limited sponsorship, but Kevin was the cup driver. And I was working for Kevin, not Morgan McClure, but for Kevin's Bush car. He was building cars. He wanted to find sponsorship to go race on his own. So I was working in the shop every day with him. And he got a phone call that they uh, had, he got fired from the cup car. So he came in, he called me into the office, and he had to let me go. Because his paycheck of being a cup driver just went away. So he didn't have the money to pay me or the, the staff there to, to, for the bush cars. So it, just like that, I lost a job and was unemployed. Fortunately, I had networked a little bit. I had picked up a phone a little bit and, and knew some people. And I went to work in a few weeks later, I think, for Michael Waltrip Racing at Michael's house. I don't that know where that started. I, I knew where his house was. Right. I've done some vehicles for Mike. We used to call it the Days of Thunder Barn because in the movie Days yeah. of Thunder, they worked out of a barn. Well, we, Michael had a, a race shop behind his house, and behind that race shop even was a literal barn. That hay bales and tractors and all that. We cleaned that's the that Cheryl's out. Cheryl's Ford house that he yeah. had. I he, yeah, yeah, years ago, the yeah. Cheryl's Ford yeah. Posse. I was a member of the Cheryl's yeah. Ford Posse. That was Posse. a cool property. Yeah. And isn't uh, David, David Gillen owns that house now, I believe? I don't know. It's a good question. So. I Probably shouldn't say that, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> that is one of those pieces of property you're never ever going to drive past it. You got to know yes. where it is. That's a if beautiful you've been property, up, oh, though. Beautiful up there in Charles Ford, but it is all two lane roads, and I can drive there, but I could not tell you the name of the roads. I can't give anybody directions to that. So, old did house. you work in the big shop when they moved to? Cornelius? No, I didn't. No, I did not. Nope. We, but I did start the Cup Series team. When Buckshot Jones and Kenny Wallace were driving those cars, Michael was driving for DEI at the time, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, mm -hmm. in the 15 car. Same thing. Aaron's was a sponsorship. Remember that big program with the Aaron's Dream mm -hmm. Machine? That was his Bush car. And we had uh, two cup chassis that he began 
the cup program with. One, we, we took both cars to the track, both chassis. Each one was a backup for the other one, depending on if we're doing a downforce track or a, a short track. And we just swap them out as far as spare cars. Buckshot Jones. You don't hear that name often. No, anymore. no, no. But I had he a was... Buckshot Jones car in my shop at my old shop in Concord. And I sold that business in 04, but I had an Aquafresh. Yeah. Double zero. Yep. Double zero Buckshot Jones car that stayed there forever. We pushed it in and out and used it as a mobile sign to, uh, you know, bring traffic in off the main highway. Was that the one with the chrome wrap on it? Was it, it had that chrome car? and or silver. silver. Yeah. It was like silver. It looked like the Aquafresh tube. Yeah, it I looked guess. like a yeah, tube of toothpaste. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Buckshot Jones. Iridescent yeah. look on the yep. letter or whatever. I don't know. Somebody I knew had it, and it was a full stock car with no motors. We just pushed it in pushed and out. It out. Looked good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It had a seat in it, let kids sit in it, take pictures, yeah. but it was it was good for stopping traffic on 29. <laughs> A little marketing, a little branding. Right, you don't yeah. need it. You don't need the engine in there. Shove yeah. it in. It. They're pretty light to push without a motor. Oh, in for it. sure. Yeah. So, what what jobs did you have in NASCAR? I mean, did you oh, ever boy. do over the wall type stuff? Yeah, yeah, I did. With with Kevin, it was more mechanics and fabrication work. And then Michael's was the same. We had those two cup cars were the start of his whole cup program that he led to in the Cornelius shop. That was the start of it. That was a beautiful shop. I mean, it oh, still gosh. is. I mean, now, yeah. I mean, one of our main sponsors, Carolina Customs and Lake yeah, Norman Dodge own it. It's a great shop. It looks just like it did, but the way he took all those movie theaters and turned them into each yeah. one was a shop. Yeah. And how you could walk down that catwalk. And, yeah. I mean, that. It was a great place. That vision for a shop was just unreal. Yeah. Um, that was I nice. Mean, you know, yeah. it's just a. Uh, Really yeah, neat. no, that that was the start was the barn. Yeah. And the cars up in back of his house was the start of that. I think that opened in 07. So I'm about three years before there in 04 when mm-hmm. we when we had the cup cars in there. Uh we had, you know, I don't know, five, six bush cars, the Aaron's Dream Machines. And then Aaron's also sponsored the, the cup cars with with Buckshot and and Kenny Wallace. So with such a small team, you you it's like a short track. Well, what do you do? Well, I work on race cars. We do a little bit of everything. I'm an expert at nothing, but I do a little bit of everything. Do you miss working on cars at all? I mean, no. You don't miss no, traveling. I don't. You don't miss the I don't the miss scene any at all. Of that. I loved my time there. Uh, mechanic, fabricator, over the wall guy. I bent all the tracks. I've changed thousands of tires in my life. You sound like everybody else that I thought was not it. in it. I mean, it was no, just. I don't miss it. I love it. It's a great chapter. I love telling stories about it, but I love what I'm doing now. With, with Waves Entertainment yeah. and WSIC Radio. You get to have a lot of fun. So oh. I remember at one of my events, uh, Jeep Tastic, I believe it oh, yeah. was year two. Mm-hmm. Um, you were the MC, the mm-hmm. voice of the show. You're up there calling out sponsors right and on. everything. You know, you're, yeah. you're walking around talking to all the sponsors and do a great job of that. Thank you. That's why Appreciate I love it. having you. Thank you. Um, but didn't you like, Take somebody's Jeep or commandeer a Jeep and, and take it for a ride. I mean, I heard them. I, like, I got permission. Oh, okay. I got permission. It was not commandeer. It was Elena's Jeep. Oh, okay. The K9 cabins. Yes. Elena, really? Yeah. Elena, that was Elena's Jeep. I went for a ride with her first and she drove and I, and I rode with her around the course that you guys built at Jeep Tastic. And I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but somehow she offered or I talked my way into driving the Jeep around the course and she said oh you'll i said how do you drive this thing because i didn't know if there's anything special she goes it's just, just a, a jeep. jeep just go drive it and she rolled her eyes at me i'm okay i hopped in there and there she's right you know i didn't know if there was anything special because you had a mud bog mud pit and it was all dirt and we went through the woods and it was so much fun and somehow i i i I don't remember how it went but i, I talked my way into it i or I, something i wanted to drive i asked her i think and uh, she said, sure, go ahead. And I did. She just like steps out. Keys are in it. It's running. So I got in line with everybody else. And I think I took it out uh, by myself. And then like when I came back around the course, I think the first time, other people started getting into the Jeep with me for rides. Now they wanted to ride. And it was cool with Elena. And uh, so I took them for a ride. And I went and, uh, you know, I, I took uh, uh, Justin Taylor with Waves Entertainment. His brother, Ryan Taylor, took them for a ride. And I just went through the, uh, the, the course, and it brought back a part of my story that I left out earlier is I drove short tracks, too, when I lived in Connecticut uh, with crew and, you know, I, I would crew on modifieds. And after a few years, I bought my own car. I drove street stocks and late models, um, late models on pavement, street stocks on dirt, though. 
at the Orange County Fair Speedway, which is located There's no in obstacles or logs or no, mud pits in, but in it street was dirt, stock no, racing. There's no mud bongs. There's no jumps. There's no up-down hills, but it was dirt racing. And the Jeep felt like an old dirt track. Like, oh, you know, you could kick it sideways a little bit and turn you know, turn into a skid and all that and, and go that and just like almost like leave it on the floor and let the car you know, help, help the suspension, help steer you, help the course steer you a little bit. So I went through there. I don't know. I don't know if you were keeping times. I went through there at a pretty good pace. I thought, and I had a blast with it. I had so much fun with that thing, but it reminded me of dirt racing where, where so I was down by the mud pit. I think that's when we were trying to add water to it at some point Could have been. and the windows were up and it come through there fairly quick. And yep. And I was like, who in the world is in Elena's Jeep? That's, <laughs> that was when, me. that's when you were that was me. That's when you were thinking you were a kid in a dirt car again because you come out of the mud pit like it was a, a turn four, I guess it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some I, dirt track. I, I think I drove that. I went to the uh, you know, you I got the signal to go ahead and it went into this mud pit. And I think my right foot just dropped on the accelerator. <laughs> I put it on the floor and I didn't want to get stuck in the mud pits. So we went down the hill, bam, and through the water and up the mud and bam, up the other side. And then the first corner is is banked. Kind of a little bit like a NASCAR right, yeah. track, but yeah, it's you a can right get some hander. Speed on it. We did it for that reason. It's a right hander though. So it kind of threw me for a loop, but I still went in there. I turned it hard to the left or hard to the right. Then I brought the wheel back to the to the left, and I felt the left rear kind of on the cushion a little bit. I think that's about where I want to be a little bit. And I kept the throttle, you know, not all the way down. You had to let off to, to but I let the back end kind of steer the vehicle around, just like you would in a in a dirt car. That you want to plant the nose and let the rear bring it around, and that's what I did. Except it was just opposite of what I do. I you know I drove the left handers for years. So I'm a little worried about having you at this year's event because in September we're doing Jeep Tastic Park again, but it's going to be at the old Antioch Speedway in Morganton, is what it was. Ooh. Now it's called Horsepower Park, and it's the fastest half mile dirt track in North Carolina. And uh, we're going to utilize part of the backstretch to enter into the obstacle course, and then you'll come out of I guess you'll go in and turn turn two, you would know it, mm -hmm. and then turn turn three. So between turn on the whole backstretch mm -hmm. will be the obstacle course, but you'll enter on the backstretch. So you'll get to drive around the, the track, half the track. The front of the track is going to be used for monster trucks and for some show stuff. So I'm going to need to call Elena. Yeah. I need a Jeep. We need a Jeep. I'm going to need a Jeep for so that. So Elena's got two Jeeps now. She just bought a new uh, Gladiator. So, mm. yeah, so maybe the... The Jeep you drove is just her, that's her old daily driver. Old that's lying around, yeah. yeah. It's I, well, uh, uh, I think one of the things Tracy told me was, next time I see you, you better have a Jeep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so made yeah. a few people mad on April Fool's with the whole Jeep event. I mean, it was, it's been an all Jeep event. And yeah. I said on April Fool's that we need to add Broncos. And I thought, you know, it'd be fun to say, we're going to add Broncos. Not My, the Jeep people. No, they eat me alive on April Fool's. <laughs> and But it made me question, like, why can't we add Broncos? I mean, they're the same wheelbase. They're, they're, it's the same thing. And I'm still very on the fence about whether to add Broncos or not. Because there's a lot of families that have both. The wife went and bought a Bronco. Uh, the husband has still has a Jeep. And could be could be fun. Here's what I learned. With our participation with Waves Entertainment and Jeep Fest, that they're the passion that Jeep people have and the protection that they have for Jeeps is off the charts. They are, it is Jeep, 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 nothing else. It is special to them. I'm not a Jeep owner, so I don't experience it, but I get it. I understand what they're saying is just the passion for the Jeep. Now your thought on Broncos, maybe a separate event at a Bronco Fest. But how fun would it be if you had a competition where you had... You and a Jeep and me and a Bronco, and we're going through the obstacle course side by side. Ooh. That would be fun. Can we get on Antioch Speedway? Is is like the whole oval open to us? Can Why we do not? That? We can I'm, do anything we want. Oh, then yes. We need, uh, I'll, I'll have either the Jeep or the Bronco. I think it would be fun. I think it would be more than fun. I mean, I don't want everybody in their F-150 and Tahoes and all that, but I think those two could, could be fun. Maybe we need to call somebody with one of these dirt late models and uh, bring those down. I think adding monster trucks is already <laughs> enough. I don't know if we need that, but it could I'm be in. fun. But you know, I I get in trouble because you've done a handful of events with me, and mm -hmm. I look at events the way the kid comes through the gate, the way 
the wife comes through the gate, mm -hmm. the, but all before the, ever the driver of the hot rod or the driver yeah. of the Jeep, I look at it from the ground up. I don't look at it from the business down or the sponsor down. And so it, for me, it's, it's, if it's family friendly and fun and something to see, something that's different, then why not? I, I agree with you. I mean, the, that's the beauty of hot rods and hops is it's always something different. With, with car racing in general, not just NASCAR, but any kind from a professional F1 Indy car, right down to the grassroots level, I don't care, drag racing, what have you, the most important thing are those grandstands. If you fill the grandstands, whatever you have to do to fill the grandstands, everything else will fall into line exactly and take right. care of itself. And tell you what, a guy with a hot rod who... Who, whose wife and kids are not having a good time is never coming back to your event. Because if you make, don't, if it's not family friendly, you don't make it family friendly, the guy is going to come once and the family's not going to come back. He's not going to come right. back. Or she and he, if it's, you know, she's got the hot rod and the husband doesn't have a good, what, what, however dynamic you want to look at it. You got to get the whole family in there. And with, with, and NASCAR did this well decades ago, mm, not so much now. But they really worked hard on filling those grandstands and making those people happy. And if the competitors did not like it, but the fans did, too bad. Bill France ran the show that right. way. It was, you know, those, those, those are the people. Here's a great story from Richard Petty. He was sponsored by STP for years. He's, you know, the STP Pontiac, STP Dodges. He says in his career in racing, he goes, NASCAR, the tracks, and STP never paid me a dime my entire career. The fans paid me every month, every dollar that I made in racing. That's true today. It's true. I believe it with Jeep Fest. I believe it in Hot Rods and Hops. Is the fans not necessarily the competitors? You don't throw them under the bus like the people with the hot rods. You don't purposely do right. that. But if something works to get the family through the gate, and maybe the guy with the hot rod doesn't really care for it too much. I say you lean towards getting the family through the I, gate. Always, yes. Always. And, and the rest of it, the guy with the hot rod or the race car driver or the race car team may not be thrilled with it. However, if it's good for the sport overall or good for your car show or good for Jeep-tastic overall, you got to go for it and say, hey, to have this event prosper, I'm sorry, buddy, with your Jeep. I love you, but you got to take one for the team yeah. for yeah. this event well, to happen. do something different. And be happy. And that's what I've done since day one is done everything completely different. You sure and, do. I love it. And you see how many families come to Hot Rods and Hops and women. And if you ask them, they don't go to other car shows. They come to Hot Rods and Hops because they like it. They can get beer. They can get wine. They can walk around. It's clean. It's clean bathrooms. Mm -hmm. It's um. It's not a, a ton of walking. Everything's within you know, close distance. Mm -hmm. And women like that. Kids love it. Yeah, I mean, but big thing is a simple thing. Just with businesses, any kind of brick and mortar is a clean restroom. Yeah, if you don't have that, people will go there once and they will never return. It's right. something simple like that. I know macho guys. Ah, eh, it don't matter. You know, along, you know, their cars, their trucks, and all that. It's like, no, sir, you have it backwards. You need yeah. to take care of the people that are that are coming through the gate, and the people with the trucks and the hot rod cars and the jeeps and whatnot. They'll understand. They will work with you on that. But 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 you know the the family aspect of it and the kids clean restroom, little things like that make a, make a big difference. Yeah. You've got your hands in a handful of events right now. So what, mm -hmm. what, I know it's, uh, I mean, downtown Cornelius, what all is going down down there this year? Wow, downtown Cornelius and the events. Well, Waves Entertainment is pretty busy We've with you, with Rev Pass, Hot Rods and Hops. Third Friday of every month for right here, downtown Cornelius, we will be handling stage and sound and bands for the Tobble Walks and the second Friday street festivals. So that is, I believe, eight events right there. Uh, when we get later in the year, we get into holiday time. Uh, we'll see. The schedule's still up in the air right now. But the Taba Walk, spring and fall, will be the last Saturday of April then the last Saturday of September. Second Friday street festivals will be the second Friday starting in May, and that should take us through October. So that's a lot of the foundation for where Waves originated, grew up, uh, became a part of. So we'll have that in downtown Cornelius. Langtree Live. Starts in May, which is right here in Mooresville as now, well. Now, what do they Thursday do at Lane Tree Live? Is that where they had the bands over by the uh, the roundabout, or what all do they do down there? There's a stage at Lane Tree, and that happens uh, Thursdays from May through August, and it's just a free concert. It's nice, tight, two hour, seven to nine. Wow! Boom, straight through, and it's free. Uh, the event begins around six, so people can come down there, bring their chairs. 
lawn chairs, blankets, and there's a lot of restaurants and bars open when you got plenty to eat and drink and vendors right there. So you won't go hungry and you'll go thirsty. Uh, so they ask you not to bring outside food or beverage, but the concert's free. I think that's a pretty fair ass. Right. You come for no no ticket charge at all, not even a ticket gate. Just walk in there and show up. But beginning in May and every Thursday through August, uh, Langtree Live is a big part of Waves Entertainment. And that's Thursday nights. Do you know the event nights? that I met y'all at? It was uh, OTR, downtown Cornelius yes. by the Galloway Hooker, the one yeah. that Adam and uh, yeah. Dick did. Yeah. Um, I remember that. What event. a fun event that was. Yeah. So we did, we provided the cars. We paraded all the classic cars in from okay. that came from my shop across yep. town to that event. Mm-hmm. And then y'all had the stage set up. And yep. I think that was the first event I met y'all at. Yep. Good um, event. I've emceed that event a couple different right. times, a few different times. The location has moved around a little bit. We had actually had, had the first one I met those guys at OTR. It took place at the Oak Street Mill, which is where right. all the talk was. Maybe that was the first Friday. event that That's, I met y'all That was the first one I think I, that was the first one I met My y'all memory, you know, I'll, I'll go by memory, right. which could be fuzzy. But then it moved over to the property near where, in, in the, near the Huntersville Cornelius line, where the Galway Hooker used to be. Right. Um, but I remember going there, and it was there. Uh, did a few events there. And I'm not sure the future of the event where it is. Yeah, they're well, they're, right now. You know, Adam and his guys are doing that downtown, downtown uh, Mooresville, like a yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's like a thermal. throttle, throttle Thursday. Yeah, it's at you know Murdo Made, and yep. all those guys are doing that, and they're yep. lining cars all down through downtown Mooresville. So yep. it's another good event. There's another tons good, of events in Lake Norman. Goodness, yeah. I, that's you asked about me moving from from Connecticut to the Lake Norman area. One of the biggest differences, I chased a NASCAR dream to come here. However, one of the biggest differences in, in life, culture, is things to do, is where I came from, my hometown, there was none of this stuff. And I find weekends here, even sometimes during the week, what do you want to do? Well, it's not just what's going on. It's what, what, what's in, what interests you because you got to make a choice on all these events that are there what do you want to do? There's multiple bands or festivals going on at the same time. We talked about Thursdays, Langtree Live and Murto Made, uh, the downtown Thursday Thunder uh, in Mooresville, will be simultaneous. So people, there's enough people in the area to healthily support uh, both as well. We've got, uh, gosh, beyond that, we've got every Friday night at Burkdale Village in Huntersville. They've got a brand new stage there. We run the audio uh, and bands for that. So that's another free concert every Friday night from now through October. We've got a new event, or new event, I'll say plural, kind of brewing in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Wow, y'all are going way away now. Brand new market for Waves Entertainment. We're thrilled to be there. More to come on that. So tune in. <laughs> uh, you follow Waves Entertainment on uh, social media is the best way to keep track of this stuff. We got some stuff coming up in, uh, yeah, Rock Hill is soon to be in 2024. One of the biggest events we do all year is every summer the Dog Island Jam. That's uh, what's the the singer of that? John uh, Sullivan. John Sullivan. Sully and friends. Yeah, Sully. Yeah. He's a great yeah. dude. He was on The Voice and made it to Blake Shelton's team, so he's a very very talented singer, and he uh, is the feature performer. That's his event. But the only way to get to that is by boat. It literally happens on an island inside or outside Lake Norman. So y'all take all the electronics, everything yeah. by boat. Yeah, yeah. It's an little run everything island. off generators. Yep. Wow. Yeah, we put our, all our equipment on a on a boat, pontoon boat, and and That's bring it out. That's gotta be a little there. difficult if you're running out of a cable or something's missing. We don't run out of cable. <laughs> <laughs> That's part part of being a part of Waves wow. Entertainment is just making sure we have the equipment. So I think you that's set up a stage it. on the island. Yep. Stage, sound, LED walls, and here's here's something neat. The only way to get there is by boat. The only way to watch it is by boat. Get this: we have the soundboard, the stage, the lights, the LED walls. Every, the mics, everything powered on stage. The sound is actually run from a boat off an iPad. Because it has to be farther away? No. The, the, well, you have to be to, to properly run sound, and I'm not a sound engineer guy, but the guys on Waves Entertainment that are engineered, you need to be front and center looking at the stage, hearing it, left, right, center, make sure everything's balanced and right, and you're hearing it correctly. So you need to be out front. However, the sound board, the hard copy, it's on, it's on next to the stage, right there just off to the side so it's all plugged in hardwired we've got an ipad that'll run that and justin taylor usually runs that off a boat 
in the water off an iPad. He's running the sound. I've for seen that. pictures that have been, but I've never made it to one. I need to. I need to do that. There's a yes, lot of logistics do. to make that happen. Yes, That's you do. Crazy. You got either got to get a boat or hop on somebody with a boat. Yeah. Well, I got yeah. a boat here in the background. We'll steal somebody's boat well, if we have to. Can we use this one over my shoulder here? Yeah. That'll do. That'll get the job done. Yeah. We can talk to Ray City Marine about borrowing a boat. So <laughs> yeah. And That's we do a little work down in Ballantyne as well. Uh, we did a little work, do and do uh, a little bit of work at the amp, the new amphitheater that they have down there, as well as the Met, which is sort of for the Metropolitan, which is yeah. a um, concert concert series that we do down there. So we have uh, our fingers in a lot of pies, you know, yeah. you, from a little bit to maybe just managing a few artists, a little bit of a little a bit of entertainment from a solo artist booking like that, all to a big production like a Taba Walk, like Dog Island Jam. Uh, things like that. It's you know we can scale our services in between. So yeah. we have some really big concerts and festivals, and some we're just plugging in a solo artist and everywhere in between. Well, y'all do a good job of putting on events, and I know you Thanks. really helped us. But I tell you what has helped me the most is having having you. I mean, Justin's been a big help in helping get this podcast off the ground, and mm-hmm. and you're really good at behind the scenes of teaching me how to talk and do some of this kind of stuff and what's you know do's and don'ts of uh of all this but just like remembering how to talk about sponsors how to, like it's hard for me sometimes on those hot rods and hops nights because we've got a lot of people that help us do that mm-hmm. and we've placed all the signs in different places but i mean yeah. it's just like you just like i hand you this list and you're like you remember it all year it's like <laughs> we, you know here's so and so and so and so and it's uh but um, I, I think about that. You're not the first person to bring that up. And I, and I wonder, it's like, I didn't go to any broadcasting school. So I just kind of fumbled into this. And I think, believe it or not, is, is being a race fan helped with what I do now. I did what you did. I listened on the radio. And I literally have given in a car in Connecticut, driven to a place where I could get the MRN or the PRN signal, sat in a car and listened to the race, and then drove back home. I'm, I'm that crazy of a race fan when I was a kid. But I paid attention to what the radio guys and the TV guys were saying about racing and how they delivered the lines. And when you, when you talk television, the, the medium is different between radio and TV. It's not the same thing. When you talk television, you think of it as a picture, and you're putting the caption under the picture. And in radio, you're actually painting the picture with your words of what you're seeing, so you do it in two different formats. But you think about nascar and any kind of auto racing look how many sponsor mentions are part of what we hear as a culture as a race fan listening to broadcasters as well as crew chiefs and drivers especially drivers talking about their sponsors and trying to make it somewhat lively and not just boring rattling off a list which sometimes i do you know it's just no other way about it you rattle off a list of sponsors you want to make sure they get their airtime, but try to make throw a little personality, throw a little sparkle in there, make them get their money's worth, and make them feel wanted because they are wanted. Because because RevFast, Hot Rods and Hops is no different than a race team. What are we going to do without the advertisers and sponsors and right. partners that are here? This isn't happening. It's not obligatory that we do that. We need them. A race team cannot survive without sponsors. What you're doing with RevFast is fantastic. But you need those companies. So as part of the Waves program of that, we do everything we can to make them feel special because they are special. Make them feel wanted and valued because they are. It's We're having a fun time. We're making a living doing it, but we can't do it without the companies that are partners from yours. So I think that has been ingrained in me since I was a little kid as a race fan to recognize that that's just not a decal on a car. That's the lifeblood of the sport. It doesn't survive without those decals on the car. Here we are all these decades later. I'm at a Hot Rods and Hops at RevFest. The mentality's still the same with me. Yeah. You know, I, you know, we, we look at Serenity Now Massage Therapy as a sponsor. That's not just a name to rattle off. That's the lifeblood you know, of Hot Rods and Hops. I had to use them on Monday after the last event, and thank you for getting me out of that little mini dragster that I thought would be a good <laughs> idea to sit in. You look great in that. Oh, my gosh. I, thank God you were there because I don't think I... She said, "You got to be what five foot one." Max was five foot one. I think f- actually, and one hundred and eighty pounds, and I'm five foot ten. And you were pushing maybe the limits. I don't know, but the go no go gauge. It was once I slid down in there. The coming back out was the hard part. I had bones locking up that I'm not supposed to lock up. Serenity now hooked you up, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah they Monday, did. Monday, they helped because mm-hmm. I shouldn't have got stuck in a in a junior dragster. And, 
<laughs> that was a, it was fun, but when when Waves Entertainment is on the road all Thursday, Friday, Saturday, do you know our offices are joined with Serenity now? So we're probably oh, so we y'all all get to use hall. that more than I do. Yeah, we we unload the trucks on Monday, and I think we head down the hall and all yeah. get massages just because we need it. Where yeah. that's a lot of lifting and moving for stages and speakers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that was that was funny though. I, it was. That was, was. I'm glad somebody captured some photos. of You that looked of great in. in that thing. Yeah, you that need was, a dragster. I I need a bigger one. I, I need, need a Jeep. Yeah. Clearly, I need a Jeep. Well, I need a I need a like a top fuel dragster, something I can fit in because that's not built for me. How about a funny car? That'd be fun. John Force is in his seventies. He can get in a funny car. I think yeah. you're you're not as big as Force, so you should be able to get in a funny. My car. My reaction time's not very good. Like I'm not good at that. I think I think we overthink everything. I'm not good at that. I'm more of an endurance type racer. I think I'd be more like a twenty four hour race guy where I could just keep keep going. I'm not a. We can get you a sports car. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I love riding around in road courses. Yeah, Simon Pagenaud, who was I a guest on the show. to him about going yeah, up to the Tale of the Dragon. That'd be fun. He's a, he's a, he's a sports yeah. car winner. He's won the Rolex 24 a couple times. Yeah, that'd be fun. It'd yeah. be fun to go ride with him up. I'd love to ride up the mountain like with him driving or you know, me drive up and him come back down or something. That'd be fun. I would like to do the two-seater that Indy cars have. And if Simon drove, that would be fun. Yeah. I would love to do that. I, uh... I had an opportunity to do it several years ago, but the line to wait, it was at the Indianapolis so Motor Speedway. Indy. Yeah, they do it at all the IndyCar races, actually. But it's a two-seater that they built. They have a professional up front. Mario Andretti did it for years. I don't know if he still does it, but he did it. How th- big of a thrill would that be to ride shotgun with Mario Andretti in an IndyCar oh, ride, fun. any track? It'd just be fun to ride oh, down wow. the road with him, yeah. I think. So, yeah, yeah, that'd be really neat. You know, Charlotte Mercy Speedway is building a, a road course. Did you hear that? No, I did not. They, they launched it this past uh, Friday. So I had really? a chance to go with our friends from Haggerty and couldn't go because I couldn't get off working time. But talk um, to your boss. Yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> when you're busy, you're busy. I understand. But, um, but yeah, they launched it, so it's going to be behind the speedway. It's like a road course. It's going to be like a club track. Really? But yeah. We really because they to. already have an, an infield road course that mm-hmm. incorporates the oval there. I think it's going to be more for like club racing for like maybe like IMSA and then like you know if you just want to go take your Porsche or your Lamborghini mm-hmm. and go ride around the course. I don't uh, know. But okay. It's uh it's coming, so that'd be neat. Maybe they'll do some IndyCar ride-alongs out there, and we don't have to ride all the way to Indy to do it. <laughs> it's not Indy without Indy, though. Yeah, it's not Indy without Indy. Well, they have an IndyCar series, but it, you ever been in the Indianapolis Motor I've never been Oh, Mo- Disney has got nothing on this. Really? This is the happiest place on earth. Yeah, yeah this is an incredible facility. I could not go to Disney and go to Indy. That's, that's go to Indy. Sure. I've been in Disney a handful of times. That's not the happiest place on earth. It is not carrying kids <laughs> on your shoulders when it's hundred degrees. Don't want to wait. not the happiest. Waiting place three hours for a roller coaster ride isn't you know <laughs> no, not your thing. No. I do like Epcot though. Walking around like around all the the, the countries. Yeah. Drinking around the world. Drinking around the world. Yeah. I've done that. You know, I actually enjoy it more now than I used to when I was younger. When I was younger, like me and my brother in law hated going to Disney. It was mm-hmm. like, this is this is awful. Yeah. But now that the kids are older and they're walking on their own, it's it's a lot of fun. Like there's there's really neat to sit back because I'm an events guy and I'm a dreamer. I love sitting back and just seeing how big that place is mm-hmm. and all the moving pieces and all the everything about it. Like mm-hmm. I don't get in all the rides. I don't get in all the childish characters and stuff it's not me it's not fun even though i know you wear a cape on shows sometimes but gotta I'm be a not, superhero i'm not i'm not into the superheroes or the cartoons and stuff but just something about walking around eating in all those different countries and drinking in all the countries and tasting different stuff and seeing the different music from all the countries it's neat and i'm sure you i know what i'm thinking hot rods and hops will be this big someday i don't think so <laughs> Not as a free event. If we can figure out how to get car guys to pay like the Jeep people do, <laughs> yes, we could we could make it turn into something. So no, that'd be that'd be fun. Well, there's examples there on how to dream big. Right. You know, Walt Disney got fired from one of his jobs early on because he didn't have enough imagination. I did hear that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's like a great example of don't give up on your dreams and keep What's working. What's crazy is he didn't ever get to see that place built though. I know. He built and dreamed all that and never seen it. But the dreamers make the world go forward. Right. So keep that in mind with Hot Rods and Hops and Rev Fast. You got some great ideas with Jeep Fast. Yeah. Jeep Fast and uh, the, the Hot Rods. always call it Jeep Fast. Jeep Tastic. Jeep Tastic. Now we're going to now we're going to add Bronco Tastic in there so I can really make everybody Jeep-tastic. mad. Jeep Tastic. Bronco Tastic. Jeep Fast. Whatever. What about Jeep Tastic and then the Bronco Fest? You know what I want to do? I want to do a Rev Fast rally where I put them all on a road and we have like a big drive from one side of town to the other. That's my. That's what I'm thinking about right now. A rally. You, yeah, like the Hot Rod Power Tour. 
Okay. But yeah, I remember fast. that. Mm. Could you do, could you organize a cannonball run? Well, that's sort of my vision of a cannonball run. I just wouldn't go all across as big of an area as the cannonball run does. Yeah. I mean, bring it back to its roots where it's underground and secret and fastest time wins. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. I think know. I have some better ideas, but I don't want to huh. tell because I don't want somebody to take them and use them. But um, yeah, I like the cannonball run idea. See, I, I appreciate I don't really care for like poker runs and. You know, all these start and stops where you stop at shops and stuff because it, it yeah. just takes so much time. No, I, mean, I want to see more of the driving where we're passing each other and things are going on. I want to stir up some trouble where the yeah. people are talking about it. Like, what's going here? What's going on there? And where it's, it's we're, we're, bigger than what it really is. We're in Charlotte. Let's race to Los Angeles. And fastest time wins. You know the logistics to get cars from my shop in Cornelius to the OT, OTR event was like, it was like 12 cops to to stop traffic for two miles. Yeah, and we, you want to go to Los Angeles. Yeah, we don't want to tell any police, though. We don't want to tell uh-huh. them. What, yeah, it's that kind of event. You know what I mean? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, underground. Right. Yeah, the original cannonball run. Maybe our friends over at Garage Oil would sponsor that. I think the friends at Garage Oil would definitely sponsor that. That sounds like something they could get behind. But, I mean, it would have to be a secret sponsorship. We couldn't, yeah. couldn't advertise it. Hmm. But cannonball run. Yeah, the Rev Fast cannonball run. You could have the Brock Yates role of you know Neil Neil Ashburn be the if man. If I could do it in a in a in a vintage race car, that would make it more fun. You so you're driving across country in something that's not even legal. That'd mm-hmm. even be more fun. Yeah. Well, it was a lot of cars, sports cars, hot rods, and secret things. That's why uh, Burt Reynolds used the ambulance because he could run across country with the lights blaring and the siren going. It's like you're Florida full of all stories. the way. I've never heard that story. I've never knew that. You ever saw the movie Cannonball Run? Mm-mm. I don't think I've seen the whole movie. I've seen parts of it. I've never seen that whole movie. The whole movie is good, but it's based on real events. They used to, Brock Yates used to organize on the Hush Hush. It was a race, East Coast to West Coast. Fastest time won, but it was totally illegal. So it was kind of like Fight Club. Couldn't, couldn't talk about the Cannonball Run. And you cl- hit a clock at wherever point on the East Coast, and it was Miami or New York or whatever. And somewhere on the West Coast, there was the finish clock, fastest time won, but so it wasn't like a legitimate race where everybody started at the same time. As like cars would come up, you'd clock out and you'd head out. Thirty seconds later, the next car would go, and it was total time. Now it's totally illegal, but you know it was a fun event. So they made a few movies out of it. Yeah. It's fun. You ever see the Gumball Rally? That was I the original. Yeah. Same idea. So I'm thinking Rev Fast, Neil Ashburn, create, bring the Cannonball Run back. Rev Fast Rally. Yeah. That sounds good, right? See, there you go. Sponsored by a bourbon and whiskey. And since I'm so good at remembering these sponsors, and I'm practicing now Jeep Tastic, not Jeep Fest. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. You know. But. Yeah, and we've got some good sponsors that would love to get behind that. Discount Tire and Interstate Cycles and all of them. I mean, we could name people for days that would love to get behind that. I don't know how, you know, if it's an illegal event, I don't know if they'd want to be maybe part of it. Maybe not. It, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, up to you. Well, yeah, we'll have to, illegal, we'll have we'll to, you have to come back on on another episode and we'll have to put some more plans together and talk I like about it. that. I like it. Let's plan So, So where can people it. find you at? Uh, right behind that preposition you ended the sentence with. That's a grammar joke. Don't oh. worry about it. Yes. Well, I'm not very <laughs> you smart. You were thinking hard a, on that. I'm a car wash guy. <laughs> <laughs> You can find me a lot of places. My my uh, my personal website is prmc.com. That's P-R-E-M-C-E-E.com. P-R, my initials, then the word MC, which you realize is a lot of silent E's in, in the word MC. Yeah. But prmc.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at Speedway Pat, and you can get a hold of me through Waves Entertainment right here. We are on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram as well. Uh, so Patrick Reynolds, prmc.com, wavesentertainment.com. Uh, be happy to talk to anybody. I'd love to, you know, give me a call. My number's on all the Waves Entertainment. Uh, and they can see you next that. Friday night, April 19th at Hot Rods and Hops. I'll be at Hot Rods and Hops right here at RevFast every day on WSIC Radio weekdays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So I'm all over the place. Well, thanks for coming. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for having me. I need to buy the domain. Cheers. uh Voice of Lake Norman. I think that Voice sounds of better. Lake Voice Norman. of Lake Norman. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Yeah. A good idea. See, you're an idea man. Yeah. Let's, waves will carry it through. Yeah. Making Cheers. waves with Patrick. Making waves. Catch the waves. See you out there. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Damn, that was fun. How about this?
Where the hell do you get this? This is from one of our sponsors, Interstate Cycles. Oh, they've dude. got everything from side by side, street legal for the off road, jet skis. This is cool. Motorcycles, you name it, they oh, got everything. I love it. Thank you to Interstate Cycles for giving us this razor to play with tonight. You can find them at exit 33 in Lake Norman. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Neil with RevFast. This is our waterless car wash product. We've had this product for now, I don't know, five, six years. And uh, we spent a lot of time developing it. 187 samples back and forth with a chemist before I was happy with it. And for everybody that says, well, waterless washer scratch, we got a regular pH balance soap. We also got our tire dressing that's dropping this month. Uh, we call it our TVP Shine, tires, vinyl, plastic. Got glass cleaner, we've even got a spray sealant. Check out RevFast.com. You can buy all the products online or you can stop by here. We even, at Hot Rods and Hots, we've got our bottle filling station right here in the shop.